Here we go. Gosh. All right, so we are going to get started. Oh, you don't want to get my knee pads. Um, oh, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to be Sitting bones back, ribs come toward thighs. 
Good, one more, head through the arms, rounding upper back, and then go the other way, sitting bones back and up, push through pinkies, ribs come toward thighs. Good, slowly lower the knees to the mat, keep your distance by keeping the pressure in the elbows and pinkies. And then sit back, keep the elbows there, but hips drag back, like you're hanging your hips back from where the elbows are stuck to the mat. Head is through your arms, try to bring your forehead back on the mat as far as you can. Breathe. With each exhale, try to let your ribs pull softer, or pull further, excuse me, softly pulling further out of the shoulder blade, out of the shoulder to raise shoulder blades, I feel like they're sliding up the sides of the ribs. Okay, on your next inhale, soft pressure through the pinky, soft pressure through elbows, drop your head through your arms a little bit more to pick up your ribs. So tuck chin in, head in, look at your ribs, pick them up, and then just let that go, let your hips drop all the way back, you should feel a lot of pull in the shoulders. Okay, one more time, head comes through the arms, ribs suck up and back, more ribs, not hips, only hips help, no tucking tail, and then let hips release, let ribs release further back, you should feel back muscles are going to pull longer, and then come all the way forward again. Good, feel shoulder stretch, chest stretch, good, okay. Stay forward over the elbows, hop your knees out to the sides, and see if you can slide out wider, if you have carpet at home, this is easy, if you're on the wood, not so much, you got your pads over there though. So I want you to have your knees go straight out to the side, way back where they were. Yeah, so you may be a little short in your stand. There we go, good. Okay, and then come forward with your body. Your shoulders should pass your elbows. A little different than what we usually do. Yep, that's it. Okay, push down to the pinky side of the hand and elbows. Pick up the floating ribs. Think of your collarbone as folding in half, folding in on itself. That's it, spreading the back. Now let your hips hang down. Yes, you're going to come a lot further forward. There we go. That's it. Better. Good. Go stretch in front of the hips. Okay. Dropping hips, drop belly, drop ribs all the way down. Good. Try it again. Shoulders forward. Press through elbows and pinkies. Spread your upper back to bring it up. That's it. Don't use the hips. You don't get to pull with hips. Hips hang. And then drop all the way back down. Once you're down as deep as you can be, elbows push forward, think of your belly sliding and scraping along the mat to sit back and do your stretch a little deeper. Good. Now let's stretch in front of the hips. Breathe. If you want to deepen it, you can bring feet out, push full frog. Okay. Come forward to your weights over elbows, bring toes in, tuck them, pop the knees back in. Perfect. Good. Let's open your hands out to the sides a little bit to keep elbows tight like that. Press through the elbows to bring ribs back, but then don't tuck hips. Let your tailbone stay reaching back, sitting bones apart. Just keep ribs up and shoulder girl. Those are separate. Yeah. Keep that little lift in your shoulder blades, like you're up in your shoulder girl, then push your feet to bring hips back. Good. Now keep ribs dropping back toward the mat. Think of your chest coming toward the mat, toward the feet. And then drop your left heel a little deeper again. Good. Should feel a little easier here. Drop the right heel a little deeper. Okay. Both heels are dropping, sitting bones are reaching up, bend the knees a little bit, then thighs towards ribs, ribs towards thighs. Good, totally opposite shape, now start coming forward, chest over elbows, drop your head through your arms, suck your belly up as high as you can, bring your head back as far as you can through the arms. More, stay forward, stay forward, stay forward. There you go, now head through the arms. There you go, get those ribs in deep, bend your back and hips. Good, upper body should be getting cozy, bend the knees, bring it all the way. Good, and come back to hands. Keep toes tucked, sit back on the heels. Good, let's turn hands backward here. Base of the hands wide. Shoulders should be pretty well warmed up. Spread the fingers out. The baby bend in your elbows. Drop your chest down into shoulder girl. Let your head hang here. Inhale. Exhale, let ribs and belly spill. Hips are spinning. Completely release on heels. Okay, put a little pressure into your hands. Think of spreading shoulder blades to start bringing your ribs back. Hips sitting on heels, suck my belly back a little bit. Think of your knees softly pressing the mat forward. And put a little bit of pressure in the big toe side of the foot. And try to lift your low belly higher up out of the front of the hips. Okay. Now you're going to go back the other way. Let your head hang. Let your shoulder blades start to slide together behind the thoracic spine. Ribs dropping, belly opening, let your low belly hang out into the thighs. 
Then it goes now aim backwards. Okay, more and more like that. Low pressure in hands to start. Spread shoulders wide as ribs come back and start sucking low belly, middle abs. Get a little pressure in the big toe. Lift your low belly, knees reaching forward. Keep spreading the back muscles by pulling the core muscles. You head drop. Keep your core supporting this shape. Pull back with the right hand. Rolling back through the fingers, bending through your back a little, then roll back forward. Make sure sitting bones aren't closed, hips aren't lifted. If you're sitting on heels, belly's lifted. Roll back through the left hand, and then roll forward. Good. Now let your hips release, let your, or your, excuse me, let your low belly release through the bent hips. Let the chest drop into shoulder room. Belly totally spilling out now. Now use muscles in the back. Feel your left, your shoulder blades, your serratus. All of the muscles pulling the shoulders back as the ribs come forward through the arms. Yep. Then roll back through your right hand and keep weight there. Pull the shoulder back to pull the elbow back. Good. Feel here? Nice. Roll it back forward. Same thing on the left. Keep belly spilled. Use back muscles. Roll back through your left hand. And then roll forward. Good. Now, opposite shape. Starting with the low belly. So hips stay sitting. Sitting bones stay released apart. Low belly starts drawing back. Then middle abs. Then hands support by spreading shoulder blades. Maybe you feel like you're able to get more of your core that way. Okay? See if you can push your hands to lift knees from here. Good. Spread the back more. Good. And then roll the right hand back. Come all the way to knuckles. Roll the left hand back. Come all the way to knuckles. Good. Lift your heels high. Think of your sitting bones. Two of them the base of the buttocks as hitting the heels if you can. If your hips are a little off the heels, just keep working on releasing them down. Ten fingers, keep hips and heels connected if you can, and keep working on getting hips there if you can. Suck your low belly back away from the front of the body, away from your pants. Pull the knees in a little bit. Then use heels to open apart, just a touch to open sitting bones. Good, so feet really have to work here. Keep that little suction in low belly, maybe you can come up to a finger or two fingers on each hand. Toes grabbing the mat. Outer foot really active. Feel like your outer foot's lifting forward. Pinky side of the foot lifting forward. Inner foot reaching back. From there, heels knee hips, hips knee heels. See if you can find your balance. If you want to straighten up, don't pull with back. Suck in and up with low belly. And then bring hands back to the mat. Let's lower your heels back, lower your chest onto the thighs. Open the knees out to the sides, but keep the feet working. So your outer foot's still lifting. All your toes are in the mat. Don't let your foot roll out to the side here. Okay? Keeping that hands plant in the mat floor, but not so far that you're too high on your toes. Once you've got a little grip on the mat, try to drop hips further back. Heels don't have to touch the ground, but drop back however far you can. Okay? And then suck low belly, middle abs, your transverse abs, right between your ribs and hips back a little bit. Drop your head. Okay? Keep the feet active. Now push your feet to lift hips up away from heels, low belly sucking, and then let the head drive, let the hips break all the way back down. One more time, push your feet, pick low belly up away from heels, and then drop back down. Good. And then come all the way up. Nice. Okay, let's see if you can put the, the armpits right onto the knees. Same little lift in the hips there, lift your hips up, hands plant, try to plug knees into the back of the arms. Okay. So bend your elbows deeper so you can get there. Good. You should feel like you're kneeling on the back of the arms. Now you're going to shift your elbows back, shoulders back, which pushes hips up, elongating spine. Perfect. If you feel really steady here, you can work on rocking toward the toes and maybe lifting up. Into the arm belt. If you're not super steady, just keep working on using shoulders to plug the knees and hips back as your ribs lengthen forward. You should feel like your heart center is coming down because shoulder blades are pulling back next to ribs. And since elbows and knees are connected, that shoulder blade back plugs hips up. Yeah, so that's fine flattening. Then eventually the tip comes. Okay, let's bring it back down. Very nice. Go to work in the arms too. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we're going to walk the hands forward. Try not to let knees touch the ground. Spread fingers out a lot. Shoulder blades spreading. Push mat away. Suck belly back. And then hips come up and back. Drop head through the arms. Good. Perfect. The more you drop the head, the more you're going to start stretching the shoulders. If you're really open the shoulders and you can dump ribs, that's when you start bringing the ribs back in alignment, in alignment again. 
depending on what you're doing. If you're always dumping ribs, that's too much. Your core is disengaged and you're going to start hurting your shoulder. If you're always rounded, that's also not good. So you want to try, if you're real rounded especially, you want to try to think dump ribs. <laughs> Disengage front of the hips, bend knees a little, sitting bones up. All right, good. Let's go ahead and bring your left leg back and up. Your real short down dog here. Open up the hips to face me. Think of putting extra weight into the right hand and then lift your ribs out of the shoulder girl by pushing the mat away for the purpose of sucking belly back ribs back and up. Okay. And then roll that left hip back down. Bring your knee in, but keep sitting bones back. Don't round in the waist. Good, then lengthen it back, keep hips square, then roll them up. Open up your hips to face me, and then roll all the way back down. Good, bring that foot to the mat. Other side, let the neck release. Bring the right leg straight back. Hips are square. Roll the hip open to face right. Good, stay here. Think of bringing your ribs in, into the back body, in line with your um, hips. So don't spill your ribs here, try to pull them in. And then roll the right hip back down. Better roll your right hip even below your left. Inner spiral right leg, it's still high. Then roll it all the way up. Good, now see if you can dump ribs. Drop chest back a little bit more. Bend through the left leg if you need to. Good, very nice. Ribs are coming toward the thigh. And then bring the ribs back to straight. Re-square the hip. Bring the knee in, keep sitting bones reaching back. Keep the head release. Don't keep the back of the head lifting the ceiling. Good, and bring that foot back down to the mat. Very nice, let's walk the hands a little further forward, a little longer down dog. Inner feet touching, toes grab the mat, come high on your heels. Good, and then bend the knees toward the mat, keep your hands pushing you back, and then bring the hips right back up, bring the heels back down. One more like that, come high on the toes, activating feet. Bend the knees, keep pressure in your hands to keep your ribs back, you should feel a lot of the toes, a lot of the feet. Bring it back up, and drop the heels back down. Good, drop your chest down. Maybe you can even come top of the head toward the mat. Dropping deep into that shoulder stretch. Good, bring your right leg up and back. Shift onto the left toes. Bring your knee into the nose, doming upper back. So lifting ribs up in the shoulder, girl. Pressing through thumb side of the hand and step right foot outside the hand. Turn your toes out 45 degrees. Back leg is straight, back foot is strong. Drop the hips down into your stretch. Good, okay. Try to keep on top of the right foot. So don't let it get too wide. It should be in pretty close. Heel is right next to your right knuckles. And then come over toward right foot. Open the right knee. Use the foot to steer it open a little bit. Let's press through that front foot to bring the hips back. Spread the shoulder blades off the back. Drop your head. Suck the belly up. So like a cat cow here. Pull part of it. And then you're going to flatten it back out. Bend the front knee. Left hip forward. Right hip open. Bend the elbows like you're coming down toward Chaturanga. The whole body stays straight as you come down. Good. Hands and front foot push together to pick you up. Drop the head, suck belly up, ribs up. And then release that like a tissue falling to the floor. Everything flattens out, gets lifted. Good. Last one, bring it up, inhale. Exhale as you come down. Good. Bring your elbows to the mat, bring your back to the mat. Very nice. Bring your left elbow in toward the right elbow, so it's right under the stern, left hand's turned out a little. Bring your right elbow into the inner foot, like you're lifting inner foot and trying to make those really connect. Okay, keeping that elbow in inner foot, drop the knee open, leaning the hip right a little, then bring your right shoulder forward. That's gonna help open that side. So your shoulder and hip are going away from each other. Elbow is leveraging against the foot, or using the foot as leverage to come forward with shoulder. At the same time, that pressure in foot helps drop the hip further away. Eventually, it'll come toward a really wide, funny pigeon if you put it all the way down. Breathe. Push down to your left elbow, pick your ribs up a little, and then drop them back down. One more. Push down to your left elbow, pick up ribs, and drop back down, get come back up. How are we doing? Good. Big stretch, right? Oh, very. Okay, now come back. Let's bring your hips back. Let the toes lift off the ground. It's pretty release here, other than outer ankles working to turn pinky out a little. And then drop your left hip further back. So you're going to let your hips open to face left, and then see if you can start dropping down, folding down a little bit. You should feel like your ribs are starting to come really close to the groin. Good. Elbows don't have to touch. 
but drop the head as far as you can, drop the elbows, drop the body. Still feel like you're pulling back with that left hip, and then come all the way up. Good. You're going to slide your leg forward. It can go out to the right as much as you need it to. The closer it stays in, the more like a full Hanuman, the deeper the stretch. So you're going to slide that leg forward. Walk your hands left until you can put the front of the left hip down on the mat. Right? If you have to bring your right foot way out here, that's fine. The mat. As long as your left hip is totally down and flush on the mat. Good. The so higher the leg is, the closer you're going to climb on, the bigger the stretch. Okay. Elbows are close together. Framing the chest. Elbows are right near the chest line. You're going to push down in your elbows a little bit and then pull back on the mat. Keep your left frontal hip stuck to the mat like you're pulling your ribs forward out of the hip. Feel that length through the psoas? Good. If you don't feel the length, maybe elbows are too far back. Try it again. Soft pressure through elbows to pick ribs up, but don't tighten hips. Let that go. Let that belly spill. Inhale. Think of inner spiraling both legs. It's okay if the right sitting one is lifted, rolling in. Then pull back on the mat. Shoulders lean forward a little to help get length through core. Get length through the psoas. And then release one more time. Push down through elbows and left shoulders a little. Pull back on the mat, lean forward. The left hip gets stuck. The ribs get elongated. Good. All right, now you're going to keep your left hand close to you, but sweep the elbow as far forward as you can. So the hand comes in near the chest. Elbow forward, put it into the mat like that. Right hand plants it there. I'm going to move my knees so you can see. Right hand hold left, hold left hand in place. Right elbow comes to the mat to help push your ribs further left, outside of that left shoulder blade. And then you can put your head down on the forearm or that left wrist. You should feel a pretty big shoulder stretch. The more the left elbow reaches forward, the more that left side starts to open up. So curl that left arm forward. Good. You feel that on the left side. Mm -hmm. Find your breath here. Keep the left leg inner spiraling, or the right leg inner spiraling. Keep dumping into the left hip a lot of weight. Right elbow again can push a little bit to the right on the mat to help you bring your ribs left. Breathe. Good, and come back up. Bring that elbow back in. Okay, from here, keep the left elbow flush on the mat. Keep that pulling back and elbows leaning forward feeling. Should take no hamstring work at all. Definitely shouldn't cramp. And you're gonna let the leg bend a little across to the right. Your leg should be kind of dangling back there. If your hip flexes and tries to lift off the mat, then your hamstring fights that. That's when it's hard to bring the leg up. If you stay lean forward, kick firmly into the mat, it should be easy to pop that leg up. Then reach back with your right hand for the foot, pull from the top of the foot, foot into the buttocks. Okay, if that's too easy, all right, you can start rolling shoulder down or you can go the other way. Reach with your left hand, come over it, and then start pulling your foot down to the floor. That'll get you at the other side. Good. Okay. Find your breath. If you want to come down, you can bring the elbow forward, bring the forehead down if you want. Or you can try to come up more like up dog and push down in hand. One more breath, wherever you're at, find your breath. Soft but long inhales, soft exhale, releasing deeper. Whatever muscles are gripping, stand the body, find them, let them go. And let that release. Good. Bring your hands back on the mat. Keep your back toes tucked. You can either pull back on the knee, or what we're going to do is try to lift the back leg, lift into a kind of a plank here, pull back all the way into your three-legged down dog and with the foot up high. Drop your left heel down. Think of bringing your ribs back by sliding shoulder blades up the sides of the ribs. Drop ribs back out of the shoulders. Then you can let shoulders come back down again. And bring your right leg back down. Very nice. You can pedal it out there. Keep hands flat. Your hands should feel like they're holding the mat so that you can pick your ribs either up or drop them down, whatever position you feel like you need in the shoulder girl. You should be really able to feel. So when people tell you to push the mat away, it's not just to engage everything. It's for the purpose of moving your ribs around, lifting the shoulder blades. Okay, let's bring your left leg straight up and back. Try not to dunk the ribs too much, although the more you dunk the ribs, the easier it is to drop pelvic bowl, which helps you lift leg. So you may want to play with that. Okay, then once you've got the leg as high as you may want it, see if you can pick the ribs back up into the back of the body again. Okay, bring that left leg in toward the nose. Come onto the toes of the right foot. Push the mat away for the purpose of sliding shoulder blades apart, picking ribs up. Come high on the right toes and bring that foot outside the hand. Come all the way down in your hips. So left foot outside the left hand. 
Toes turn out 45 degrees. Okay? And your heels should be even with the knuckles. Keep your right hip dropping toward the mat. Good. Back toes are working. Okay? Try to push through your left foot. Start bringing your hips back. Okay? Lift the ribs up by spreading shoulder blades. Drop your head. Think of looking at your own ribcage. Suck core up instead of trying to use back. And then flatten that back out. Bend your left knee, drop your right hip, bend your elbow straight back like chaturanga. Keep shoulders rolled back here. Then push through the foot and hands evenly and come back up. Spread the shoulder blades, lifting ribs. Push through both feet, suck the low belly up. And then go the other way. Start flattening out your core like that tissue falling to the ground. Everything gets flat and long. One more, pick it up, inhale. And then exhale, drop it down, bend elbows. When you come down, think of dropping your back heel back, especially if you don't feel like you're getting a big enough hip stretch. So let's do it like that one more time. Come on up. Okay. When you start coming down, think right hip forward a little. Well, that right hip, think of inner spiral and dropping it forward, left hip back. Start bending left knee, then right away start dropping right heel back. Then bend elbows back and try to come down a little deeper into that stretch. Go a little different there. Good. Put the back knee down. Bring elbows to the mat. You can't bring elbows to the mat, by the way. Grab some blocks, put elbows on blocks. Maybe you need to need two sets of blocks in order to be high enough on your elbows. But I want you to go to rest in the shoulder drawer. Drop the head. Breathe. You can uncurl the back toes if you want to. Just letting ribs drop deeper in the shoulder drawer. Now push down through elbows, pick the ribs up. And then let them drop back down. Think of pulling elbows back, shoulders forward a little bit. Good. Let's bring the right elbow in toward the left. Right hand a little out to the right. So your right arm's diagonal. Left elbow is going to be parallel to that, the forearm. Put the elbow right inside the arch of the foot. Okay? And then keeping the elbow connected with the arch of the foot, left knee opens, left shoulder comes forward and across your mat to open up the left side. Good. So if it's not going to happen, elbow to foot, stay in your hands, right from here. Okay, you just need more space. Okay, drop your left knee open. Yeah, turn your foot out a little more. That's it. Now bring right shoulder back, left shoulder forward. Yep, keep dropping that left knee open. Yeah, feel that space in your left mm -hmm. side. That's better even though you're higher. Mm -hmm. Feel the difference? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and come back to hands. Push back with hands. Let your left toes come off the mat a little bit, but it's pretty released except for pinky side of the foot turning out away from the index knuckles. So you're getting long in the inner foot here. And then let your right hip drop back. Opening hips kind of to face right, like you're pulling back on the mat. The back knee, you feel like it's pulling forward. And then see if you can drop your spine down pretty long here. Elbows don't have to touch the floor. Maybe you want to put elbows on blocks. Hands are fine, whatever works. But do let go of the neck muscles, let your head release. And keep that right hip trying to pull back. Breathe. If you do get elbows on the surface, blocks, whatever, feel like your elbows are almost helping push the mat forward to bring ribs further back, right hip further back. Spread your left toes, lift your low belly, find your breath. And then come back forward. Now you're going to slide that left heel forward. You can keep it as close to you as you can, still putting the front and the right hip all the way down into the mat. The wider the left leg goes away from you, the easier. Then walk your elbows forward and down. They may have to go pretty far off to the right. The right frontal hip has to touch down. You can't have any space here. That has to be firmly into the mat. And now you're going to go a little further right with your elbows. And diagonally right. There we go. Okay. Your other foot can't be turned in like this, grabbing the mat. I want the inner foot long and rolling in toward the mat. Better. Good. And then you can let the foot release a little, but don't do this to it. Don't sickle it. Push down through elbows, touch the finger grips, and then pull back on the mat with your elbows, almost like an army crawl. Shoulders lean forward, and then you should start to feel a pull in the sideways on that right side. Hips staying planted into the mat. Do it again. A little pressure through elbows to pick up ribs. Don't pull with core and hips. And then pull back with elbows, shoulders coming forward, lengthening you out of hips. So this is the same feeling, hip being stuck to the mat as you lengthen ribs away. That's a feeling we want you to be able to create with your own opposition from the brain in a lot of different postures. But we're using the floor to anchor the hip. One more time, little pressure through elbows. Shoulders come forward, touch. And then pull back on the mat, think of leaning forward past elbows to lengthen. 
Good. Let's add some breath to that. Inhale as you pick it up. Exhale, inner spiraling both legs. Feel low belly lift a little. Pull back with elbows to pull out of the hip. Very nice. Okay, right hand into the mat. Sweep your right elbow forward as far as you can. The right hand stays close to you. Your left hand can trap the right hand to keep it there. And your right elbow, the further forward it goes, the more you keep it forward and a little bit left, the more you're going to open the ribs on that side. Your left elbow pushes in that left, and you can lay your head onto the hand or forearm of the right arm. Okay, find your breath here. Keep rolling and inner spiraling both legs. Keep dumping your weight into the right hip. Inhale, long and up. Exhale, long in. Keep a little pressure in the left elbow to bring your ribs right further on the mat. One more breath here. Try to see if you've got any movement in that right shoulder. Bring it to the ear. Then drop it away a little bit. Try to make sure it can drop away. And then bring it back up. Come back to your elbows. Let's go for that easier stretch first. You're going to pull back on the mat with elbows leaning forward, which should keep the hip nice and long, the right hip. Then let your right leg just dangle up there. So you're ready to release. You can let it drop left a little and reach back with your left hand. If you can get to the foot, try to come to the top of the foot, pull it into the buttocks as much as you can. Then you can drop forward. You can let the elbow come out. If this is your biggest stretch, you can stay here. Okay, if it's really hard for you to get the foot, you're probably flexing the front of the hip. So once you do get the foot, push your foot into your hand for a second and then let that go. See if your hip will release into the mat a little bit more. That's too easy. Go the other way. Left elbow props you up. Right hand reaching back for the foot. And then you can turn the hand over. Maybe you can come all the way up to more of an up dog. Pushing down on that leg. Whatever works. Find your breath wherever you are. I'm going to take two more here. Okay. And let's let it go. Whatever stretch you have. Good. That's that tighter, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bring hands back. Okay, you can either stay with hands and just bend knee to pull hips back, try to make it come from the belly, or tuck toes, lift up like planks, suck the belly back and come right back up into your three-legged down dog with your heel up. Good. From there, try to open up your hips, then drop the heel back down. Good, and then reclose hips and bring the leg back to the mat. Good. Feet are going to pedal out for a second. Let the hips release. When one heel drops, the other knee should hang. Hip should hang. Let your hips separate. Don't let your sitting bones get stuck to each other here. Let the hips rock back and forth. Some mobility in your core. Good. Okay. From here, drop your chest a little further back. Think of your sitting bones reaching up and back to help with that. Drop your head through the arms a little bit. Feel the thumb side of the hand really stick into the mat, right where the thumb meets the wrist. And then try to press it out away by engaging chest a little bit. And then come all the way forward in the plank. Keep that thumb side of the hand strong. Inner spiral the arms. So I have the elbow facing in, biceps facing. Pick your chest up higher. Don't in the upper back. Good. Keep the upper back going, but let your hips drop. Good. Now start letting your chest drop. Bend elbows back just to touch. Good. Basically an up dog. Kind of hold over toes. If you can. Then to bring it back up, drop down for a chaturanga. Push into the hands, suck the belly up, and then hips go up and back. How are we going with that? Good. Drop the heels. Okay. One more time. Little change. Pick the toes up, or pick the heels up nice and high on your toes. Drop your head into your own chest. So that's going to start rounding up your back. More. More. Keep dropping the head through the arm. Good. Now pick your ribs up. Tuck tail, but don't think tuck and squeeze. Think lift low belly. And then start coming forward, keeping your chin tucked in. Shoulder blades off the back, push through the thumb side of the hand. Good, so now that should have resulted in the dumb back. Keep it up. And there's the dumb. Inner spiral arms, don't even further push through thumbs. Feel chest, pull collarbone together. Suck low belly up. Okay? Then let your hips start dropping, but keep the dome in the upper back. That's a tough one to separate. Once hips drop, then let the shoulder blades release and let your shoulder blades come together behind ribs. You want to push forward over the toes, bend the elbows back, or come forward. You should not pull your low back here. Good? Okay. Tuck toes again. Shoulders come forward, elbows bend towards each other on the kick it back up, and hips go up and down. Very nice. Drop head through the arms. 
Soft bend in your knees. Think of your sitting bones reaching up and back and your ribs dropping back. You're pretty much sitting in your shoulder girl here. And then slowly bring the knees to the mat. Okay, now, uh, ribs back. Middle abs lift and head drop and Right hand to the right, outer thigh, and then roll your left shoulder back. 
Left shoulder rotates to roll toward the spine. Left thumb's heavy and pushing the mat. Suck the belly in, stay rounded in the stretch. Right elbow wide, spreading that right shoulder blade off the back, top of the head down. Breathe, inhale. Exhale, lower your shoulder back forward. And again, lower the shoulder up, back, and then elbow in, right elbow wide. And then we'll roll forward. And one more like that, lower your shoulder up, back. Right elbow wide. Let's take right hand to the head. Bring your hand up to where the back of the head starts rounding to the crown of the head. Right elbow forward and down. Suck the belly back. Then roll it back forward. Good. Right hand back to the back. Go forward with the hand on the head. Yeah. Bring your left arm across. Let it kind of break over you a little bit first. So let it just release. And then roll shoulder forward. Elbow wide. Don't touch the right side. Don't let your obliques push your ribs together. Keep the ribs apart. You can use your serratus. Those run separately on the ribs. Don't push the side. The more you trust this hand, you can lean back into it. Lower it's an open. Now roll the shoulder kind of up and back to get that opening. Then elbow comes in, shoulder rolls back. Lots of pressure in the bump side of the hand. Middle abs up back. Top of the head forward. Left elbow wide. Just spread your left shoulder blade away from your right shoulder blade. And then roll the right shoulder back forward, sitting in the back hand. Roll the right shoulder up and back, twisting in the core with a rounded spine. Good, and then roll it forward. One more time, we'll add that left hand, roll the right shoulder back. Bring left hand to the head, right where the back of the head starts rounding to the crown. Elbow in, twisting you and bringing the head down, rounding the spine. Breathe. The more the head drops, the more the floating ribs can go back, rounding deeper and keep your middle, middle core muscles, deep core muscles good. And then roll that forward again. Both hands to the mat. Turn your hands to face backwards. Good. Hands wide. Roll shoulders forward. Bend elbows back. Good. Try to roll the shoulders back. Top of the head forward. Chin in. And then roll the shoulders forward. And that goes back a little bit behind collarbone. Roll the shoulders back. Elbows pull toward each other. Top of the head forward. Neck getting out of the way there. Good. Roll the shoulders forward. Low belly drawing back a little. Good, roll right shoulder back, lean into the right hand, left shoulder forward, reach left knee away. Sit, roll left shoulder back, we're going to go left, right shoulder forward, reach left knee away. Come back to the center, press through the hands, and come all the way up. Good, how are we up? Okay, sitting bones back and apart. Good, hands out in front, turn hands out to the sides. Inner spiral arms. So, biceps face in. We have an arm spiral on those postures and an inner spiral. Press through the thumb side of the hand and spread the shoulder blades off the back and suck the middle abs back. Think of your ribs as going diagonally up and back, not squishing hips. And low belly sucking back. Sitting bones roll under you on the mat. To come back forward, think of getting long through low belly, lifting low belly out the front of the head, and then drop in the shoulder roll. Okay. One more time, press in the hands to spread shoulder blades. Think of your ribs lifting up, low belly lifting up. Middle abs pulling back. Drop your head. Keep a little pressure in these up. and suck the belly back. Then coming up, get longer through the belly. Lean in the shoulders, drop belly, drop ribs. Maybe you can hug elbows in and come a little deeper into that stretch. Good job with the knees. I know. I know. They're really good. They're much better. Yeah, bring it back up. Drop ribs back down. Keep the right foot active. It's trying to grab the neck. 
You should be lifting and spreading toes just a touch, just a millimeter to get that ball of the foot anchor. Keep plugging the right hip back. Maybe you can lean into the knee and lift the foot off the mat. Or lean into the elbow, excuse me. So put weight into your right hand. Look like you're kneeling on your own elbow. Now it's actually easier to plug that hip back, shoulder back. Good. And then bring it back to the mat. Very nice. See if you can drop your right shoulder. Think of rolling it forward so the back of the hand faces the ceiling. Good. If you roll your shoulder down far enough, you can bring your hand around and the palm on the back of the hip is open. Bring your left hand around. Your right hand grabs your left wrist here. Or you can just get fingers, that's fine. But try to keep this hand back of the hand on the butt. Don't turn this over. Good. From there, you're going to pull the right hand down, pulling the left Basically, the right hand holding the left wrist, hold the left hand down. If your hands only touch fingers, right hand should hold the fingers of the left hand so you can pull down. And then roll your left shoulder back. Good job. Feel that shoulder stretch too? Mm -hmm. Okay, from here, if you have more room to move, you're going to roll the right shoulder back and bring those forward. If you've got even more room, you can come on your toes and see if you can come up here. Not happening? Not right. happening. Stay with what you got. Good, let it release. <coughs> and then now see if you can bring the, in the back, hold the outer foot, bring your leg up. Left thumb on top of the right big toe, pulling it forward and open. Right thumb inside the pinky. Both hands, and one hand on each arch. So one hand is on the outer arch, one hand is on that inner arch. Good. Pull your shoulders down from serratus to pick your ribs up the thigh. Keep any bend for now. I want ribs and thigh to get married here. Good. And then let the ribs drop back, shoulder blades, front of the belly sucks back. Good. Pull it back up. Good. Calm. Once ribs are against the side, maybe you can start straightening leg a little bit more. Heels are going to roll out a little bit. Down foot more than in foot. Keep ribs against the leg. Nice. Bring your left hand under the right. Hold the outer foot. Good. Drop the leg forward. Bring your right arm back. The, left, the right leg goes across your center line, and you pull across and twist from core. Try to pull the low belly up. Good job. And bring it back. Let right hand comes to the inside arch of the foot. Suck the belly back ribs. Or your uh, upper, bit, upper back is open. You're pulling back. Then pull the shoulders back to bring your forward. You can bend me if you need to. Same thing. Drop ribs back. Feel that reach though from the leg. You can keep the knee bent, but reaching the hands to help you spread the back. And then come back up. So you can fight it straight. It's the same thing. Good. If you're square enough, you may be able to keep enough opposition. Low belly back, heel forward, just slowly lower the leg. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I was just going to say, if it's not going to happen, don't go to the point of no return because it's not. <laughs> okay, good job. Let's take that right leg back into it, bring the left leg out of it. Yeah, once you get to the point where you don't have it anymore, you go. So you want to just test it a little and then come right back up. All right, keep your left foot on the mat. Right knee is right in front of the right hip. Bring your left arm in front of the shin, elbow out to the side. Try to bring your hand back and plant it with elbow right over hand. So you got to get that foot further back so you can get your elbow in front of your shin. There we go. And hand is outside the foot. Yep. Fingers facing forward. Other hand outside as well. And you're going to tip into your left foot to come up. Yeah, the further forward the foot is, the more you have to come up and over to get there. Also, you just may need to get a couple blocks to get there. Once you're forward, left shoulder plugs back from the serratus. That elbow pushing into your shin lifts the hip up and back. Once you've got that space, keep your left foot flat. Try to drop ribs back down into the stretch, into the shoulder girl. Good. If you feel pretty good here, tip forward a little further. Think of your knee as kneeling on your elbow and pick your left foot up. You got it. Now once it puts up, that's should easier to plug the shoulder back, hip back, and get longer. Try to lean into that left hand, left elbow a little. That's the job. And bring it back up. Very nice. Good. Okay. Let's see if you can go for that shoulder stretch through the bind. You're going to bring the arm inside the leg. Let's inner spiral now. So the back of your hand faces your midline. Then reach as far forward as you can. Keep that inner spiral. Keep that shoulder wrapping down. Back of the hand figure over the palm facing the ceiling. And bring your hand to the back of the hand on the hip. Perfect. Then the right hand comes around. Perfect. Your left hand holds right wrist or fingers or whatever you can reach. 
Then you can pull down on the right hand with the left hand, pulling the chest open and rolling the right shoulder blade into the midline, into the spine with that tension. So the pull down from the left hand gives you leverage to roll the shoulder open. At the same time, it's tightening the bind on the knee. So your left shoulder can roll back to when the ribs vertical. Yep. Good. If you've got that, you can come to toes and try to tip back and bring it up. This isn't such a point of no return one. You're not too high off the ground here. You can bring it back if you're up. Good. Okay, now catch the outer foot with the hand, bring the leg up. Good. You can probably do this without your block. Do it without? Yeah, try this without the block. Yeah, that's bothering that leg on my pillow. Take, yeah, take that leg out of it and just either put it across or put it out in front. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to look back. So that's how we did it on the other side. Thumb on top of your big toe, bringing it forward and open, and then other fingers hold your inner arch. Other thumb is inside the pinky with those fingers holding the outer arch of the foot. So you're really spreading across the other parcels. Feel that? Let the shoulder blades come apart. You suck the belly back to round the spine. You're not pulling with your upper back. You're pulling with your core. Cool. Drop your head in, then reach heel away a little bit. Now go the other way. Put a soft bend in your knee. Pull down with the radius. Shoulder blades come down to bring ribs up. Get taller. Good. And then go back the other way. Low belly pulling back. Drop the head in. Pull down the shoulder blades to bring ribs up to the thigh. You want to bring your floating ribs as high up that thigh as you can. Keep that big toe open. Keep it open. If you can connect ribs and thigh, maybe you can start straightening legs. Good. Breathe. The outer foot lifted especially. Okay, bring your right hand underneath the left to the outer arch of your left foot. Bring your left hand back. Let the leg drop forward and across your center line. You're going to pull that leg across. At the same time, lift from low belly like it's underneath ribs, inside core, and then softly twist with low belly in. Keep your foot active. Don't let your foot sickle. Turn it out. There you go. Breathe. Try to pull back on the leg a little to lift. Good. and come back to the center. Left hand goes to the inner arch of the foot. So your hands are crossed. Suck your belly back, ribs back, head forward. Then you can bend if you need to, but pull shoulder blades together behind ribs and bring ribs forward. And then let it go back. Do it again. Pull it together. Okay, maybe you can straighten leg here, go to the against side, and then pull back. Good. Now when you come down, this leg has to be right in line with the hip because it's going to put a little pressure into the mat. And mostly you're powering, your, op your opposition is core back as heel reaches forward. That opposition is what slows you as you come down. Yes. See, probably what it was on the other side is this knee was in such a big stretch that it was not willing to put any extra pressure into the mat. So that was easier because the legs long. Good. Go ahead and go with that foot. If you were in a stretch with the other leg, bring that out. Don't straighten it right away. Put some pressure into it. Flex and point the foot a little. And then you can slowly straighten it. Good. How we go? Good. No worries? Okay. Good. Let's go to one more uh, stretch for your hips. I want you to bring your right leg back and left leg forward, like you're a cheerleader. I know. Good. And I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn to face you. So actually, think about making a 90 degree angle with the femurs. So the right one is straight out to the side from the hip, the left one is straight forward. Good. And you're going to think about facing the left knee. Tent your fingers on either side of that left knee. Okay, and I want you to just practice rolling through the hips while sitting. Your right hip's going to roll all the way forward toward the left. You feel like your left groin is pulling back. Then feel like your left knee is pushing the mat forward. Roll all the way back till you're sitting on the floor with your right sitting bone. Your right foot has to be far enough away for you to sit, close enough so the hip. Bring it forward again. Roll the hip forward. To bring it back, the low belly starts drawing back. Your left knee should softly pushing that away. Good. Do it again. Roll the right hip forward. Feel that rolling through the hip. Okay, now think of keeping shoulders forward, head dropping. Suck the low belly back. You can roll in the hip back, but keep your shoulders forward a little. Round in the back. Yes. You feel that? Roll the hip forward again. And then rolling back. Now we're going to do it again. This time we're going to roll forward and hold. Keeping the hip forward, release the glute. Don't squeeze that right glute. Bring your ribs over to the right. Now keeping your ribs a little more right on the top of that hip. Now roll the hip back. It should feel a little different. Then roll forward, keeping hips right. Don't squeeze the glute. The glute never gets involved. And then roll the hip back. Yeah, start to 
one more, roll the pose, and like that. Good. Let's turn toward the right leg now. Ten fingers on either side. Actually, we'll go with flat hand next to right leg. And bring your left hand to the knee. So you can push into the right hand enough to pick the right ribs up and get them up and past the right pelvic bowl. Left hand pulls a little with elbow wide to help you twist. Okay? If you feel stuck, like ribs can't pass pelvic bowl, it's probably because your hip is still engaging and pushing forward. So the hips got to drop all the way back. Okay? If it feels easy, you can come a little further, bring your left arm across, and you can come into prayer with elbow against knee to twist. And then come back. Good, let's twist the other way. Turn your body all the way back so that your hands are parallel to the left thigh. You can hop your left single under a little more. Good. Okay, from here, keep your left elbow hugging in. A little pressure there helps you bring ribs up. And then roll the hip back.
thumb with fingers, and then you're going to let your hips totally release all the way to your low bodies in your hands. Your shoulders get pulled down because of that weight. If I let go, my feet fall. Okay, so keep all the way to low body in your hands. Roll your shoulders back, let ribs open, inhale. As you exhale, roll shoulders forward, a little ribs drop into the ball. Your hips get more to drop longer in the hands. Feet are released. And again, roll shoulders back, inhale. Exhale, roll forward. Last one. And exhale, release. Good. Bring the legs in and strengthen the arms. Bring the knees all the way in. Okay. You can bring your bolster a little bit higher up your back. Do that. Maybe you were already good. But see if you can get elbows to rest on your bolster. And then bring your hands behind the backs of the knees. Let your legs open. And then walk your hands up to hips if you can. Think of your low body as being somebody else's. It's not engaged. And you're going to push your own hips over your head. Elbows pushing down on top of the bolster. Okay, so you're going into a kind of a baby plow here. Totally not using hips. Once you're there, let knees drop toward the mat. Keep soft pressure in your hands. And then your shoulders pull down into the floor. Like you're going to push the floor away with shoulders, pulling the shoulder blades together on the mat. And see if you can tuck toes and straighten legs into a flag. Keep shoulders pushing down. Reach pubic bone up, unrounded. Good. And then come all the way down. How are we doing? Got a catch in my rib cage. <laughs> Happens sometimes. Got it. Not it. Go ahead and push your bolster down to the tip of the tailbone. Let your low back hang in that little rounded space there. Release the hips. You can roll back and forth a little bit. Or just rest in a little bit. Okay. Uh, and then when you're ready, go ahead and push your bolster all the way down to the calves. And I like to keep bolster under the calves for the final resting pose. Certainly, don't have to. Feel all that space you made in your hips. Let that settle in. Yeah. Let your palms face up. Let's take one more long, soft breath. Feel the ribs down and soften the chest as you breathe. A better leak out slowly. Ribs releasing back down into the earth. Low belly sinking. Try to remember to release facial muscles before you finally let go. Look at your eyes rolling back into the back of the head in the middle of the forehead or the third eyelid. Release all the tension in the muscles in the forehead. Try to feel like there's a spreading across your brow, across the bridge of the nose, across the face of the tongue or meets head and between the ears, near the jawline at the base of the skull. Inhale again, keep those in line. And everything back. Start deepening the breath again. Inhaling on and soft. Hold that air at the top of the breath. And just let it leak out. Let's reach arms overhead. Spread fingers, spread toes, reach through your heels. Just soft. Inhale. Exhale. Bring the arms up. Close hands in the fist point. Toes roll all the way in. Keep toes tucked. Curling in. 
and then inhale, drop hands back in line. And then exhale, just let everything go. Uh, you are all set. Make your way to sitting however you want. You can tend knees, stack hips, roll to one side. Or if you'd rather, you can just reintegrate the lower belly back. Those hips around over the ball, suit between the legs here if you can. Great. Good. Very good. Nice too. So glad to get back. Good. Good. Good.